How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the Tresses Collectibles channel. I'm Randall, aka Cheezacats. And I'm Simu, aka Chairman. And today, we're going to be taking a look at some waifu decks for the recently released set Rent a Girlfriend. Similarly to the Quintessential Quintuplet set, which we also did a waifu deck overview for, this set is divided in such a way that each of the four main heroines, Chizuru, Mami, Sumi, and Ruka, each have their own decks that you can look into building, each with their own unique strategies. Unlike Quince though, there aren't as many cards that are exclusively playable within a waifu strategy, so feel free to also use these waifu decks as a basis upon which to build a more optimized deck, featuring all of the heroines if you so choose. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it with our first waifu deck starring the main heroine, Chizuru Mizuhara. Chizuru waifu is an 8 gate deck, utilizing her level 1 double R and level 3 double R climax combos. As such, you will be able to have good selectivity and hand size via your gate triggers throughout the game. The level 1 combo also helps out with this selectivity, being able to salvage any character from your waiting room on reverse, and then also giving you the option to discard a rent-a-girlfriend character to salvage once again. The Chizuru level 1 also has the option to salvage the 2-0 event, a key piece in Chizuru based decks. The 2-0 event can be played to send itself to memory, and while it doesn't do anything immediately, on any future turn, the event can be sent from memory back to the waiting room to allow you to play the level 3 Chizuru combo from hand for free, even while still at level 2. Between this event interaction as well as the early play heal to stock Chizuru, the deck will be looking to spend a lot of hand, but won't have as much stock usage, so feel free to frequently use your brainstorm abilities to utilize your stock, keep your hand topped up, and mill through the deck quickly when needed, since the level 1 combo doesn't mill. At level 3, or even at level 2 if you brought out Chizuru early via the 2-0 event, you can begin utilizing your level 3 combo, which burns for 2 on attack and also gains an ability to bounce herself back to hand when front attacked during your opponent's next turn. The 2-0 event and level 3 Chizuru have some nice flavor as well, with the 2-0 event being like the payment for the rental date, the level 3 Chizuru being the date with Chizuru, and returning to hand being the downtime between rental dates with Chizuru until you place her back on stage again for the next date. Additionally, you can use the other level 3 red Chizuru as a way to get more copies of the level 3 combo, while keeping your hand size high as well. Her on play effect lets you look at up to 3 cards from the top of your deck, add any of them to hand, and send the rest to waiting room, and she has a climax combo with the same climax as the level 3 burner, allowing her to sack herself to bring out the burner from waiting room, which also coincidentally procs the heal at the same time, making for a very powerful combination. This deck aims to play fairly aggressively. In the level 0 game, how aggressive you can go depends on whether or not you open with your good early game cards, like the Ditch Climax Salvage, which is a 3k level 1 on the opponent's turn, or the Salvage Ricky, which can allow you to recoup card advantage. Aim to secure your brainstorms as quickly as possible, as these will allow you to not only utilize your stock and keep up your hand size, but also mill through the deck quickly and supplement your aggression with its plus 1 soul boosts every time you play a Gate Climax. At level 1, look to get reverses with your combo wherever you can. To fill in the holes, we also run a small changer package, with an offensive 6500 beater on our turn that changes into a defensive scry on the opponent's turn, allowing us to have a safer first deck rotation. At level 2, use the 2-0 event and 3-2 Chizuru early play healer in combination with the level 2 global support, and finally go for the kill with the level 3 burn combo. One last note about this deck is that you probably noticed that this deck only has 3 green, the early play itself. The reason I chose to only play those as green is because I felt the high amount of selectivity between the gate climaxes and the level 1 combo made it okay to only play those 3 copies, while still being able to play the early play as well. With its 4 or more on stage early play condition, you're not really looking to play multiple at a time, so if you can level one of them and then play another, you're basically good to go. Up next we have Mami Waifu. This deck, um, has 50 cards. Honestly speaking, Mami Waifu is not a good deck by any metric, which may or may not reflect on the actual character herself. That isn't to say she doesn't have good cards, but that her cards have little to no synergy with each other. She has one of the best Riki effects in the game, and great utility at level 0, but a subpar level 1 and level 2 game. Her level 3 event is actually really good, if it didn't only summon her underwhelming level 3 climax combo. The deck doesn't even agree on a good climax trigger spread, with 4 awkward wind triggers hanging around. Not all waifu decks are created equal, and Mami definitely drew the shorter stick and the rent a girlfriend wife set. If you're still committed to playing Mami waifu, then I have a few suggestions that may make your experience less awful. Mami has an excellent level 0 game with 4k beaters, 
Riki, great milling options, and a sick bottom decking effect that makes going second oftentimes better than going first. I would recommend taking level 0 slowly, removing every card your opponent plays, and not going for direct attacks if possible. Doing this gives you more time to set up for your level 1 play and can potentially bleed your opponent out of precious resources early on and give you a substantial lead. Mami's level 1 combo has a neat trick. It works on the back row, which means you can and should keep one in the back row if you plan on playing the climax multiple turns in a row. From there on, the game plan is to find a way to keep hand advantage while dealing damage and clearing board, and maybe set up a guaranteed lethal swing with a level 3 climax combo. Good luck. Next, we have Sumi Waifu, who has a very powerful suite of cards that revolve around her level 0 brainstorm, so let's take a look at those first. Her level 1 combo in this deck is actually a level 2, which can be early played if you have the brainstorm in your level zone, so you should aim to get the brainstorm into your hand as soon as possible, clock it, and then level it. The combo goes with a standby climax. On reverse, you can pay 1 and sack the climax to look at up to 4 cards from the top of your deck, add up to 4 rent a girlfriend characters and or 2-1 Sumi events from among them to your hand, and send the rest to waiting room. Then you can choose one of your characters and give it a 3k power pump until end of turn. A single copy of the combo nets you a huge amount of card advantage while also allowing you to use the standby climax to develop your board moving forward. Your ideal target to bring out off the standby is the 2-1 Sumi, another card that wants the brainstorm in your level zone. She is a 1500 assist to all Sumis, letting your level 2 combo go up to a very respectable 8500, and substantially buffing any other Sumis in front of her as well. Additionally, she can rest herself with her act ability to give another 500 point buff, and at the start of your Encore step, if you have the level 0 Sumi in level, you can discard a card to draw a card. Having a free filter at the end of every single turn is extremely powerful, and adding on to the other two abilities makes this a very strong card in the Sumi package. At level 2, we have the 2-1 event, which can also be grabbed off the level 2 combo. This event allows you to bring out the Sumi level 3 climax combo while still at level 2, functioning as an early play healer of sorts. And it also gives it anti-backup and hexproof as well. The level 3 Sumi is an 8500 healer, which goes to a massive 11-5 while you have the brainstorm in your level zone. Her climax combo is with a gold bar, allowing her to give minus soul to two of your opponent's characters at the start of their next attack phase. Utilizing these healers with the 2-1 support allows you to have some massive 13k walls at level 2, and when you add in the climax combo, it's very possible to gain a huge lead in damage between your healing and Sumi's minus soul effect. Getting one copy of Sumi early using the 2-1 event is easy enough, requiring one event and one level 3 Sumi, but getting a second one out can be quite tricky as you would need another pair of event and level 3. However, if you can trigger a standby at level 2, you can easily bring out either a second copy of the level 3 combo, or one of the PR Sumi, which gives a global 1500 boost if she's in the front row, further bolstering your already huge board. As this deck relies on getting that level 0 brainstorm into your level zone every time, we also run 3 copies of the level 0 support, which has an ability to level swap in case you miss it at level 0. As long as you're able to get that brainstorm into your level zone, it unlocks the powerful potential of the rest of your deck. Last but not least is Ruka Waifu which is an interesting deck focused around dealing damage to both players. With 8 pants triggers, the deck pushes a lot of damage, while the accelerate effects offer defensive presence on the board, creating an accelerated game state that pushes both players faster to level 4, whether they're prepared for it or not. There are two aspects to Ruka's game plan, Climax Combo and Accelerate. Ruka Waifu gets easy access to the level 1 Climax Combo through the 1-1 Just a Little More event which does a ridiculous 69 plus 10 damage, but also summons two copies of the Climax combo from your deck. This, alongside a level 0 searcher for the event, allows for an easy time accessing the level 1 combo. However, with no way to salvage the combo, it's imperative to be able to protect it if you want to loop the combo, which is where the defensive accelerate effects come in. Ruka's unique 1-0 counter requires accelerate to hit 2k power, but it also replaces itself with a card from the top 4 of the deck, milling out of bad compression and into fresh decks while winning board. At level 2, Ruka has access to a 3-2 early play with another kind of defensive accelerate. By paying 1 stock and clocking yourself, you can minus 2 soul to an opponent's character, effectively healing 1 damage. Playing Ruka is all about this risk-reward dynamic of damaging yourself for an even better payoff. Ruka Waifu is blessed with both level 0 clean cut 
and on reverse top check 3 effects which gives the deck a major edge in the early game. From there we want to set up our level 1 game either through the 1-1 event or just sculpting for it with our many utility options. It's important to try and grab a copy of the 00, Zero Ruka PR for the global power and the accelerate stock refund. At level 1, our climax combo should find us level 1 counters that we can use to win board and get additional cards, setting up for our plays at level 2. At level 3, we have 6 functional copies of the 3 2 climax combo, which only needs 7 stock to full combo. So play aggressively and don't be afraid to use resources earlier to gain a greater advantage. And that concludes our waifu deck overview for Rent-A-Girlfriend. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. We still have a lot of content to go through for Rent-A-Girlfriend, including our meta deck profile and gameplay videos, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for those. Until next time, I'm Randall, aka Shizukats. And I'm Simu, aka Chairman. And we'll see you next time. Bye!